All right, welcome in to our 2023 Housing Internship Program Overview. Uh, this session is for both candidates and hosts, basically anyone who is either involved, connected, or considering uh, our Housing Internship Program through Akua Y. Um, if you're new to the Akua Y world, uh, we are the Association for College and University Housing Officers International, that's what the I is for. Uh, and really we work to serve all professional staff members uh, in housing departments globally. So we're glad you could join us today. Um, a couple of notes about our session. Uh, this is in a Zoom meeting format. So you are able to unmute and chat with us. If there's questions that come up, you can be on camera, you could not be on camera. That all works for us. Please use the chat function if things come up while we're discussing uh, topics. And if you want us to dig in deeper to something, just put in the chat. Um, you know, for us to get to know our audience who's with us a bit more as we move forward, would love just a, a chat hello, uh, wherever you're joining us from. And if you're considering being a host or a candidate in the program, if you could just put that in the chat as a nice welcome to get us started. And as you're introducing yourselves in chat, I'm going to pass it over to my co-facilitators for today. Uh, Lauren, why don't you start out? Awesome. Hi, folks. I'm Lauren Murphy. I use she, her pronouns. I'm the current housing internship program chair. Um, this is one of my most exciting parts. Um, when As a staff member at George Washington University, um, so I've been really excited to be able to serve in this capacity for this committee. Um, I am hosted at the George Washington University in Washington, D.C. I'm the director of residential education. And as I said, I'm just excited to be in this space with folks. Thank you all for joining us. I'm going to pass it on to Yolan. Good morning, folks. My name is Yolan Graham. I am the oh, an associate director for essential living here at Clemson University. Um, she, her pronouns. I'm excited to be here. Always enjoyed being part of grad student development, and I think the housing internship program offers a lot of space for that to happen. Um, so happy to be here and to be part of this uh, committee as the chair elect. Thanks, Yolant. And uh, my name is Spencer Giese. I'm an educational program uh, manager at Akua. I'm also the director of the housing internship program. I think this is year five or six doing so. And it's been an amazing program to be a part of and to meet so many professionals early in their journeys in higher education and help connect them with some extraordinary experiences they can have in those summer months between year one and year two of grad school, or even uh, between years of undergraduate education or prior to going to grad school, we've got a variety of uh, levels of folks who join the program and get a great experience on a different campus on their own. Uh, so we're excited to meet you all. Again, if you could just put in the chat where you're joining us from today, and if you're considering being a candidate or hosting the program, uh, we'd love to just hear a bit from you as we continue. Um, I'm going to pass it over uh, to our chair and chair-elect to share a little bit about our goals and format for them. Yeah, so as Spencer said, we're having both um, hosts and candidates join us today. This is an overview session, um, so we'll be answering kind of giving insights um, that are applicable and kind of helpful for both kind of um, folks who are joining our process. Um, we're going to take some time to go just kind of overview of our timeline, the process and the portal um, to make sure that everyone's able to kind of access and navigate this process well. Something I really appreciate in the um, this program is that the dates are really defined and there's just kind of a, a pace of this that I really kind of find helpful when I've hosted candidates or navigated this process myself. Um, we're going to, Yolanda and I are going to take some time to just at least do some like prep kind of things to consider as hosts, as candidates, as you're starting to to engage with this program. Um, we're going to take time to answer questions or kind of give some really um, sub-specific kind of um, content on um, thinking about compensation, navigating the process, um, virtual, in-person kind of elements. Um, and then we're going to wrap up and also kind of highlight just some things you can expect from our committee. We have a committee of folks that are incredible, um, folks who are have just been interns themselves formerly last summer, as well as just folks um, who are professionals in the field at different points in their career, um, who have already started planning some really great content experiences um, and support for you all um, for, especially as we kind of kick off the spring. So we want to always be able to shout out our amazing committee members. Um, and, and 
with that, I'm going to kind of pass it back off to Spencer to kind of start um, getting into our content. All right, uh, watch out for those mouse roller wheels. They'll take you through the entire presentation in five seconds. Um, let's talk about timeline. So I, we receive a number of inquiries about the internship program from both hosts and candidates wondering, oh my gosh, did I miss a deadline? I just had some folks emailing me yesterday. Oh my gosh, it's too late. Can we still join? And the answer is, of course, yes, the program may be open, but you've missed nothing so far. So if you're still on the fence about hosting or being a part of the program, you're in the right place. Uh, today, let me check the calendar. Today is December 14th. Our program opened on November 30th. Um, what that means is candidates have the ability to go in now and create a profile in the system. Hosts have the ability to go in and create their internships. Neither of those postings are visible to the other party. So those are just internal to you. Um, certainly when you're done with your profile, you want to hit the publish button so it's out there. Um, but even hitting publish, it's not visible to anyone else yet outside of yourself. So you've got that time to build that up. Um, if you're taking some time over winter break to dig into that a bit more, great. You got plenty of time, no stress. Um, this is really our prep period. On January 4th, um, that's when visibility opens in our program. So we have essentially five weeks built out uh, where as candidates, you're going to be able to go comb through um, the internship postings uh, and host sites. You're going to be able to comb through and look at the candidates and their profiles. Uh, and really, it's just that's viewing. You'll if you're a host site, you're going to want to favorite some candidates. There's a there's a star button you can hit so you can keep track of candidates who you, re, you reviewed and you thought they really are a great fit for your posting. Uh, as candidates, you can go in look at postings, and you can even hit the apply button. When you apply, it doesn't matter if you apply on January 4th or February 7th, the applications don't get to the hosts until February 8th. So there's no rush necessarily. We want you to have the time to craft your materials uh, for all the places you're interested in. Um, during that period of January 4th, February 8th, we know there's gonna be higher traffic. We know there's gonna be more candidates joining during that time. We know there's gonna be more hosts joining at that time. And we're going to, I would recommend to you to sort uh, postings and candidates by date last updated. That's uh, one of the abilities we have in the system. And that's a really great way to see, oh, this is a new person who just joined or, oh, this is a new posting. Wow, this looks great. Um, so just know that you'll, that'll continue to be fluid. Um, and the one thing I would, I would say for candidates is when you're looking at postings from host sites, some of those postings may have one opening. Some of them may have 30 openings. It just depends on the school and the position. So um, be be in tune to that. Obviously, if you're in love with the place and they've got 20 openings, there's a great chance you'll probably rise to the top there. If it's a place that has one opening, it may be quite a bit more competitive. But ch check that out. Um, once we get to February 8th, those applications become visible to hosts. They can start to review applications and they communication is open. So we have a messaging system in our in our internship platform where as a host, you could message a candidate and say, hey, you look like a great candidate. Please consider our posting. Um, candidates can reach out to hosts and be like, hey, I, I applied. I want to know, is there anything else I can be doing or I'm really interested, et cetera. So that communication opens up um, and applications become visible. <laughs> If, if, you are, if a process is moving quickly, you may already hear on February 8th or February 9th that you've been offered an interview for a position once they review your materials, which is incredibly exciting. Uh, and again, everything remains open. So candidates can continue to join the program at this time. Host sites can continue to join the program. Postings can continue to be created and edited. So there's no, there's no deadline. Of course, we recommend at this point in the process people are in because you're gonna get the most out of your experience. Uh, interviews begin on, starting on February 15th, and we've allowed about three weeks for host sites to have time to interview candidates they're interested in. We recognize the time of year, there's some conferences happening. There's oftentimes student staff selection happening, maybe grad program days. There's a lot of ha things happening in the spring. We've tried to create some large windows uh, for folks to have the opportunity to both interview and search while also balancing all the other parts of life that are happening, going to school, working professionally. We know there's a lot happening. So we've really tried to create some large windows 
where you can still fit in time to have your internship occur. Um, starting on March 8th, position offers can be made. Um, those can be made via phone call, email, message in the system. Um, if we always tell candidates this, and we will reiterate this again in the spring, if you're contacted before March 8th, that is inappropriate, that is outside of the system, if you're, if you're made an offer before March 8th. Uh, certainly report that to us. Um, as a host site, if you are making offers prior to March 8th, you stand to uh, lose your ability to post internships in the future. Uh, and it's just, it's not a great way to really build professional rapport with the future of our profession. So we, please don't do that. Wait, wait until March 8th. Let's keep the level, let's keep the playing field fair. Let's, let's allow our candidates to have a really great experience exploring all the offers they may receive. Um, and oftentimes we'll have a first wave of offers that go out and acceptances and Canada might be like, oh my gosh, did I not get anything? Just wait. A, a host site can only offer as many positions as they have available. So if they have one opening, they can only make one offer and they've got to wait for that can to say yes or no before they can move on to candidate two or candidate three. So it can be a bit of a slow process and be patient. We will have uh, future uh, virtual sessions for candidates as we approach offer day. So don't worry if you're a candidate, you're either watching this live or the recording and you're nervous, what's that like when offers come out? We'll have a breakdown. We'll we'll be with you. We'll do a QA. and a um, And at any point in this internship program process, and this goes for all, all parties on the call, on our KUI web pages, we have a purple chat box in the lower right-hand corner. If you want, if you need immediate assistance, click on that purple chat box, say hello, someone will help you. If you say you need help with the internship program, more likely than not, it's gonna be me at any hour of the day here to help to make sure you have a great experience. So just hit that purple chat box. All right, so that is the, that's the timeline. Um, all the things that you could expect later in the process if you're a candidate, we do offer small travel stipends uh, for folks to apply for in order to receive some assistance with their travels to and from uh, a host site. Those are marginal. They do not they do not meet the entire need of our students, but we're trying we're trying to help. Uh, so I would not I would not rely upon that to fund your entire travel, but certainly we try to our found our Kuai Foundation tries to assist students in that way. Um, a little bit about the the portal that just to give you a heads up, you're going to see uh, your profile there. You'll be able to view positions after we get to January 4th. That'll be the same place that you search for positions, that you set up interviews as a host or a candidate where an official offer is received. If you get a phone call with an offer, that's great, but it has to be offered in the system to be official. And it needs to be accepted in the system to be official. If it is not offered and accepted in our AKUI system, it's not an AKUI housing internship, just for the record. You might have an internship somewhere, but it's not official. And really, um, a cool is playing both matchmaker and also intermediary to make sure that, you know, school and intern have positive experiences and we work together to make sure that both parties are communicating and, and you know, having a positive experience. So please uh, make sure that you offer and accept officially in the system. He doesn't like it when the students have bad experiences. That was my dog running away. So uh, I'm going to pass it over to our next slide to talk about candidate considerations to uh, program chairs. All right. So if you are going to be a candidate in this process, there are a few things that we want to encourage you to keep in mind now as you think about participating. Um, so start to think about and reflect on and to make note of what your goals are for the role that you are seeking. There are going to be a, a host of uh like a lot of opportunities, different kinds of opportunities that different institutions are going to offer to you. And so take some time before you see postings to say, what is my goal here? What do I hope to learn? How do I want to develop as a, a professional? Um, and use that as a way to filter through the things that you look at, because that can help it to feel a little bit less overwhelming. It can also help you to be more directed in the, in the process. Think about some of the logistics things. Uh, what are what functional areas are you interested in? What competencies might you be interested in gaining? Um, are there specific experiences that you 
would like to have, maybe you don't have this as part of a current assistantship or internship on your, your home campus that you're looking for. Um, think about the institutional type, size, and location. So we have institutions that range across the United States that are different sizes, di meet different student population needs, and that you might be working with for different purposes over the summer. I think going back and thinking about your goals also helps you to figure out what are, how do I manage the logistics of the experience that I'm trying to um, have over the summer? And then be intentional about setting up um, your application. Review your resume from now, like have someone be working with you to review your resume um, and then pay attention to the positions that you are reviewing and applying for, because sometimes they may have specific things that they're asking you for. So the last thing you want to do is do a blanket kind of one way of applying to everything and have missed one of the details for something that you maybe were really interested in. So be paying attention to the specifics that each position might require of you as a candidate. And then last thing on here is some, take some time to prep for the interview um, and the interview process. I think there is sometimes the, the uh, misconception that you can get it right the first time. Um, and as someone who's done multiple interviews, you rarely do. Um, so definitely take some time, find mentors, find a supervisor, find a peer who you might be comfortable with and have them run with you through um, different interview questions or even just introducing yourself in an interview. I think a lot of Taking some time to do some of those things can help you feel a bit more comfortable when you do get into an interview space um, so that you feel more prepared and can be more successful um, in sharing who you are and what you're interested in. I'm going to pass it off to Lauren now. I'm going to talk a little bit about just some things as hosts um, that you should be proactive in thinking about as well. Um, I think the first one that came to mind for myself, and I've, I've hosted interns for the last eight years um, professionally, um, is not forgetting the administrative aspects before you even get into this process. Um, and that often starts for myself and my experience of making sure that there is funding available for your intern um, and taking time to whatever that looks like, whether it's your leadership members in your department or division, your budget offices, making sure that there's that funding available and having those conversations proactively um, so that also you can be transparent in your process in your position description on what is available not only for funding for like hourly wage or stipend but also if your campus is able to do travel allowances other kind of um, compensation aspects for that as well um, it's taking time to be really intentional about your position description finalization I know at my institution we also have that approved um, by other leadership members um, in our division just to make sure that it's in line with our departmental values values, um, but it's really taking time to craft an intentional position description that not only speaks towards the role and the responsibilities, um, but also gives a sense of your institution, the kind of unique place that they might be coming so that again, our candidates can make really intentional, informed choices. Um, it's also making sure that you understand what your HR's involvement are. Um, on some campuses I've worked for, it's student employment that is the entity that um, will be doing the processing for your summer interns. At my current institution, it's HR, and I have to do an affiliate process for a temp worker, which is a very different dynamic to be navigating. And I can assure you, being proactive with those partners, engaging with them before you even have a person hired or considered um, will help you in the the long run when you kind of get to that nitty gritty of getting them into your system and onboarding. Um, it's ensuring kind of, I spoke about being intentional about your position description, but for us as educators, this is an educational experience for the candidates that we're welcoming to our campus. Um, I know that uh, the interns that are coming to our campus, they're going to do work for us. There's tasks, there's things that we have to get just accomplished in the summer amid all our competing priorities. But I really encourage hosts to center education versus labor of the interns that they're welcoming to campus, because I think that will really kind of shift the mindset on how you're crafting this experience. So it's ensuring your position description is really geared towards competencies 
learning outcomes. For myself, I use the AKUI kind of competencies to kind of guide on these are the areas of work that um, this intern is going to be able to expect to function in because um, I want to be transparent, knowing that between, you know, like when they receive their offer and when they arrive, maybe in May, um, 50 things could come on my to-do list of what that will look like. I personally craft my learning outcomes with the intern that I ultimately select. Some folks have very kind of defined roles that they can expect what the learning outcomes can be. Um, but I, I do encourage folks to take that time to really do that exercise around what are the competencies, what's the learning outcomes for this role so that you're centering that education. Um, it's, it's being proactive also in thinking about what's your interview process. I have a committee that helps um, kind of run the process. So it's making sure what questions are we going to be asking? What do we need to know to ultimately make a decision? I run a process that's a one interview process. Um, I have colleagues at other institutions that do two interview process. Um, as Spencer said earlier, there's a lot going on in the spring. So it's also making sure that you're creating an interview process that can be transparent from the start, um, that fits with your needs as an institution, but being intentional about the questions and kind of the expectations of what you need to be getting from your candidates to make your decisions in an informed way. Um, I never think it's too early to think about onboarding and training. Um, I know that you'll probably take um, greater time and as uh, we will probably have a lot of sessions and kind of support on what that can look like for you all as hosts from our host and candidate experience committee. Um, but really being thoughtful about um, what can this look like? What resources and support do I have? What do these individuals need to be able to know to come into our institution successfully? It's also being proactive and thinking about the experiences you can craft for your intern, again, as an educational experience, um, because in that you can be proactive in how to set that up. I'm I'm in an urban setting with other institutions very close by to me. Um, so I often spend a lot of time in my spring or just in the connections that I have seeing, do you have capacity this summer to maybe have my intern visit you? Um, are there other kind of experiences that are unique to either my institution or the city that I'm in that I can um, already think about engaging with them? Because again, I'm able to talk to my candidates about that as well in a proactive way so that when they're thinking about coming to my institution for the internship, they'll be able to make a better informed choice. Um, so being really thoughtful of the different experiences, whether it's visiting other campuses, um, having one-on-one -on -one meetings with different kind of individuals and professionals, um, visiting kind of local um, other like organizations also in your area and being proactive about that. So we're going to move to the kind of just kind of some other topic areas that I'm sure are very front of mind for folks. Um, thinking about starting with navigating Spencer, you can go forward. I yeah. like, there you go. Um, and and as I will leave time at the end to also um, answer questions and give insights. But we looked at kind of the questions that came in from registrations and also the just the questions that folks typically have very front of mind. Um, and kind of the topic of navigating the entire process and Spencer and Yolanda will also chime in. Similar to what Spencer said earlier is there, we know our springs get busy for both hosts and candidates, right? For hosts, like I'm typically hitting my RA selection processes, TPE, um, just the spring rigor. Um, so it's making sure that I'm being very intentional and proactive about my calendar for the spring right now, blocking off time that I will have to maybe offer interview times, um, making sure to get those committee meetings on the calendar so that we know we have review periods, um, just being very proactive, just that I have the time and capacity and space to do this process well. Yeah. Um, for the hosts or for the candidates, it's similarly, you all are students often, you have many things on your plate. How are you going to be able to balance this to be able to have your space and your self-care as well through this process to do so and show up as your best self? Um, that's the biggest thing that I also just, I talk to folks of you have to pace yourself through this process. I appreciate how structured it is in the timeline. So take advantage of that and now be proactive about how you're planning on navigating this process. And, and I would say as a candidate, be open-minded to locations that you might not have considered initially. It's, it's typically two or three months of your life and it could be life-changing. Uh, so, you know, take a risk, go somewhere you might not have expected to go. You never know how much you might love it. Uh, and also in terms of navigating the process as a candidate, the, one of the most important things you can do is understand your availability in the months of May, June, July, and potentially August as you look for internships. 
if you are a first year grad and it's your time between year one, year two, work with your department, work with your grad program. When do you need to be back on campus to start year two? Uh, because that's an important date to know. I've I've had too many interns over the years that found their dream position and everything was going swimmingly. And then it they found out what time when the date they need to come back to campus and that they didn't work with their internship. And, you know, so be aware of that, communicate that open and honestly early on. And there's a chance, there's such a chance for greater success. And our host sites understand that you've got programs to go back to, just like they're trying to run a summer program. I think the other thing that I would add about navigating this process is that a lot of times when you're going through it, it can feel like you're the only one, like you're by yourself. I think sometimes what can be really helpful is having someone to talk through and process some of the things that you experience. So you may have one rocking interview and then you have one that's like terrible. Um, and so being able to Ident well, not even being able to identifying the people that you will want to have those kind of conversations with early, um, the community that you want to create your, for yourself um, to help you as you review positions and are not sure, or as you go through interviews that go well or don't, or as you think through how you make a decision about what position you're seeking or, or what you want to accept. Identifying those folks early um, and letting them know that they're part of your community, um, I think, can be really helpful as you navigate some of the, the parts of this process that can feel very lonely. You know, Alanda, like I agree, and even for hosts, it's it's figuring out your colleagues and other folks. Of I think that there's many of us at different institutions who have hosted candidates before. It's how I host my candidate is informed by a lot of the mentorship I've received and investment. So similarly for our candidates is use your community of professionals, especially if you're a first time host, because that's overwhelming. And I think I remember that um, it's taking time to reach out some of the practices I do in my internship, like having my candidate, my intern go to other campuses for visits came from other folks telling me what they were doing at their institution. Um, so utilizing the Akuai com community, because um, there's a lot of us who host or have experiences of crafting these experiences and not being afraid to use this network, which is so incredible. All right, I'm going to jump into our next topic that is always a hot conversation. That's intern compensation. So earlier, Lauren was alluding, hey, make sure you've got funding to have an intern, support to have an intern. Uh, when it, the in the very unique part of our internship program and what makes it stand out from others is that we are the housing internship program. Now that doesn't mean you can't work in conference services over the summer, but what it does mean is that housing is provided with your internship. And that is vitally important for our intern candidates to know that they're coming to your campus. And as part of your conversation, you're providing a place for them to live. You're providing, and then in addition to that, you're providing a stipend slash meal plan. Um, our most lucrative places, positions, offer us a healthy stipend and a full meal plan to go along with that place to stay for the summer. Uh, typically some sort of apartment, has a kitchenette, et cetera. Um, just, just like if it was a housing program, um, the meal plan really connects to what you have for cooking capabilities in a space. So if your space that you're offering an intern doesn't have cooking capabilities, it had best be a full meal plan that can support every meal they need. And if you are not, if you are not offering a full meal plan, then the apartment that the intern is in best have the ability to store food, cook food, etc. Um, we've done a lot of data tracking with internships, and our our baseline, our average internship compensation. Is, four, is a $4,000 stipend for the summer, whether that be paid out hourly or paid out monthly, lump sum, whatever that might be. Um, but our average rate of compensation has been $4,000 plus an apartment, plus a meal plan of some sort. So as you're thinking about hosting intern, what that should look like, those are your numbers you should be shooting for at the bare minimum. Um, and our candidates, I can attest, it is, it is a competitive candidate market for hosts moving forward. So as you are a host trying to track candidates to your position, you are going to need to 
reach out to them in the system, pursue them, and then offer a compensation package that gets them excited and wanting to join your campus for a few months. So just be mindful of that in the process. Um, we are we are long past the years of unpaid internships. That's not something that should be happening in this program. And we are long past, I mean, and housing is a must. Uh, we do check uh, in our system for uh, the compensation levels that are offered by host sites. And we will directly reach out to folks if they're not posting uh, that those pieces of information in their profiles as they build out their their positions in our system. And I feel like I've covered it all there. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna move on to, um, we've got a couple topics uh, that are coming up. It's considerations for in-person and virtual internships. Uh, we have had the opportunity in our program since 2020 uh, to for an intern, ship to be hosted virtually that is the one type of internship that can be done that doesn't include housing so we do have a few few institutions uh, that do host virtually and there are some candidates who that is what they are seeking i can tell you over 90 percent of our internships are held in person um, based on data from past years of the past couple of years of hosting sites so please don't feel like there's a pressure to do virtual or that there's a huge demand for virtual but you can offer virtual opportunity and there are candidates who will apply and be interested in that just fyi um what are what are some considerations for in-person internships uh that lauren and yolandi might suggest candidates look for especially for candidates it's I think it's similar things that we've already kind of drawn from. It's being really intentional about the environment that you want. Maybe you're at a rural institution and you want to go urban or vice versa. Um, what's the size? What's the scope? What's the experiences that that in-person location offers to you? Um, and how does that fit in your professional development um, as you're, you're choosing to enter this world of student affairs that we serve in? Um, it's also being really thoughtful about your needs in person. Um, I talk a lot to my um, grads and mentees about, you know, like, if you have to go across country, what's the affordability of that? How are you going to get there? Also, just as a person, are you going to have the support systems that you personally need? Um, are you going to have the resources that you personally need, um, depending on what you need um, just at that point in the year? And just being really thoughtful and intentional about that. Um, Maybe you, maybe you can just drive. So maybe you, your radius is just kind of how far you wanna be able to drive to a location. Can you afford a flight? What does that look like for you? And just being really thoughtful about that. Great. I think I'll touch back on uh, what Lauren shared earlier about training and onboarding. I think particularly as you think about all of the internships, but as for someone who is in person, being prepared for when they're going to arrive um, is really important. It sets a tone for what the internship looks like. So think through the timeline that you need to create for yourself as a host. Plan backwards. So if your person is arriving on this date, when do you need to have all of your materials lined out, all the people that they would need to be meeting with? Um, ways that you are engaging them in conversations about conversation about learning or what their goals are. When do those things need to, to happen so that you can feel prepared to welcome them and start the process with them in person and virtually. But I think sometimes it, it it's when you're virtually the lines get a bit more blurred because it, it can there's a bit more distance. Um, but I say definitely keep that in mind and think how you can do backward planning um, as a way to help yourself be more successful. Wow. I would also offer for hosts for in-person internships, um, being thoughtful about environment, where you're placing them to live on campus, where's their office, but also being really thoughtful about what are the social circles and the peer circles more that they this intern will have available to them. Uh, when I crafted the internship for GW, I have my assistant director supervise that because we we have that intern be peers to our full time community coordinators. Because um, especially at the the initial part of when I crafted this, we only had two of them, um, and that can just be a little island depending on how your department structured, where where office space is, 
Um, and I, I always encourage hosts to be really thoughtful, especially for in-person internships. What does their peer group look like? What is their kind of potential mentorship resources and kind of those relationships look like? How do you also make those available to them front and center, knowing that, you know, for you all candidates, also be thoughtful about how you want to engage in those kind of opportunities, because that's also, I see the most critical part of this internship experience is providing relationships um, that can really kind of fuel um, for both hosts and candidates, fuel your career, fuel your profession and work. Um, but what, how are you being thoughtful, especially for the host, how are you being thoughtful to craft that so that the intern that you bring on have the opportunity to actually engage fully in that? Thanks. So I recognize that we have talked so much about the internship program for hosts and candidates. We want to open it up to you all uh, that are joining us live on the call today. Um, we've tried to touch on some of the topics that were submitted in registration, but if there's something that we've not covered, please feel free to unmute and welcome yourself to the group, or you can put it in the chat and we will answer it live. And as folks ruminate on questions, I just want to offer, um, as I said, we have a, an amazing committee with subcommittees that are already thinking about um, things to offer for both a host and candidate. Um, there will be a number of webinars for both groups um, in the spring, everything from setting effective interviews, how to prep for your interviews, thinking about offers day, um, navigating onboarding um, for either host or candidate. Um, but we also have a group of folks that are um, working to create and craft a virtual intern summit um, for the summer, um, which we do not have a date established, but it will be, um, we expect in June. Because um, again, we want to continue to build those relationships and those connections and be able to offer some professional development as well for interns who are in the program virtually. Um, so there's going to be a lot of things coming out, a lot of support but also if you all have things that you are finding you need as hosting candidates let us know because that is what our group is really focused towards but I know that we have folks with questions so we're going to turn it back to that hi good afternoon everyone my name is Janita I'm joining you guys from Kane University in Union New Jersey um, this is going to be my first time uh, working in, in hiring uh, an intern, but I know in years years prior, our institution has hosted an Akuhoa intern. My question is, I know you mentioned that we can have multiple positions under a posting, but um, we're ideally looking to have multiple interns, but with different job components. Would that look like two separate postings and two yep. separate job descriptions? That's right. It would be... It would all be obviously under the same school, but you would just go and create new internship, create new internship in the system uh, and to do that. So once you're logged into the, the program uh, portal, you're able to do that. You can either edit your internship or create another one. And we've got, we have a number of schools in our program that will host three different ones and they just have far different tasks in the department. If they were really similar, I'd say you could you could have them be under one posting and uh, talk through that with candidates. But if they're very different, I would just have different postings. Yeah, I recommend different postings too because that really allows your candidates to be very intentional about what they're choosing to um, apply for. What I will say, and you you're going to want to be thoughtful about this, is um, I have three different postings, and on the bottom of my postings, I actually refer them to the other two postings. So that they know that there's two other opportunities because I have residential education, ops, and summer um, housing. So they're three very different, but I refer to them. Um, and actually, I have three different groups that work towards the hiring of those. So we all link up on which candidates apply for maybe all of them. Um, but I ask my candidates in mind that even if they're applying to all three, they have to have a different cover letter for each because each role is different. And I ask questions for them to answer. Um, for those. So it's just being thoughtful of um, for your process, what makes sense. But I do recommend if you have multiple postings, refer to them so that they also know, because um, maybe it's your school that they want to come to. Um, so it also helps them understand of like, oh, there's different opportunities for me to consider if I really want to be at your location, in your institution. Thanks for asking that question. Appreciate it. And glad you could tune in today. Um, we recognize this video is going to be uh, shared online as well. Uh, 
after we process it and put it up both on our webpage and our KUIE YouTube channel. Um, so again, if you've got questions, use that purple chat box in the lower right hand corner of any web webpage, um, or you can reach out to me directly. Uh, you see my email on the screen. We're thrilled that you could join us today. Uh, we're going to stop the recording and then stay on if anyone wants to stay on and chat on that. Have a great day. Best of luck in the process. We hope that you find great interns. We hope interns find great places to be uh, for an internship experience. So thanks again, y'all.